and welcome to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Merry Christmas. Glad you're with us today. The Verdict is here each week discussing topical issues and meeting some interesting people. Merry Christmas. Merry Kent. Christmas to you and Merry Christmas to all of our viewers. Uh, yeah, we're here uh, 52 weeks a year. That's right. We and sure darn well are. We certainly are. <laughs> and it's a, a wonderful Christmas time. Like it or time. not. That, that's right. <laughs> well, uh, we like it. I hope you like it. That's the real test. Do you like it? If you like it, we like it. If we like it, our sponsors like it, and we keep coming back. Uh, we've got really an interesting guest today. We've got the Honorable Jerry Askins, the Lieutenant Governor-elect of the state of Oklahoma, uh, the uh, first woman to uh, head the uh, House of Representatives in the, in the, on the Democratic side of the ledger, first woman Democrat to be elected as uh, a Lieutenant Governor. She comes with a broad uh, uh, expanse of experience mm -hmm. and uh, talent. <clears throat> We're going to be talking to her about a lot of things that are going to be coming up in this upcoming session. She's one of the most important people in state government. We'll uh, learn more from Jerry Askins today, the Lieutenant Governor-elect, right here on The Verdict. At Chesapeake Energy, here's a few of our favorite hornets. Alexis likes reading. Sam enjoys history. Alec loves math. Chesapeake is proud to support both the Oklahoma City NBA Hornets and the Young Hornets at Horace Mann Elementary, where over 150 Chesapeake employees mentor to children each week. The students gain a lot from the experience, but not as much as we do. Chesapeake Energy, committed to building a better Oklahoma. I'm John Holcomb along with the coach Pat Jones. Uh, we got a little bowl special coming up, don't we? They ought to have a rule that if your staff has been fired, yeah. you should not be. There's three teams in postseason now that you did such right. a good job, we just fired your head coach. Yeah. Boise State is excited to be in this football yeah. game. The big story coming out of OU's camp, of course, Adrian Peterson. They obviously think they have a chance to win. It's the Cox Channel primetime bowl special exclusively on the Cox Channel. He needs 28 tickets, Tommy, by the way. <laughs> Hi, honey. You've got to check this out. What? What are we listening to? I had digital phone service installed today. It sounds just like before. I know, but it's going to save us a ton of money. With Cox Digital Telephone, you'll save big every month. Keep your same phone number and get your favorite calling features. Just pay less. That does sound good. You should hear the upstairs phone. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Indeed, honored to have uh, Lieutenant Governor-elect uh, Jerry Askins with us today. She is uh, the uh, first woman to be elected from the Democratic side of the ticket as Lieutenant Governor of the state of Oklahoma. She did her undergraduate and law work at the University of Oklahoma. She served in all three branches of government. She was a district judge for approximately eight years in the judiciary, judicial side. She served in the House of Representatives and the legislative side for a number of years and, as I said, had a leadership role. Uh, she uh, uh, is involved in many community activities above and beyond her government service, and we're very honored to have her uh, in advance of her being sworn in. She's still uh, governor-elect, but will be governor to us. Uh, mm -hmm. Governor Atkins, thank you. Askins, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Ken. It's a pleasure to be here with both of you. Well, let's back up to the election night. You exceeded expectations. People thought mm -hmm. it might be closer than it was. You won easily. Were you surprised by the results? I was very excited. We knew with three people in the race, because there was an independent, we, you know, I'd been telling my staff, we might not get 50% of the vote. We just have to be the front runner, mm -hmm. uh, as has happened in Oklahoma several other times in other, in other offices. So uh, to, to exceed the 50%, however slightly, uh, clearly I was very excited about that. 
I know you're getting ready to start your term. Uh, mm -hmm. You get sworn in January 8th and will be the lieutenant governor at that point. Mm -hmm. What do you hope to accomplish as lieutenant governor? Well, I think that there are a number of opportunities uh, this particular four-year cycle that haven't presented itself before. Mm -hmm. First and foremost is the opportunity to work with the state senate in an area that has not been used by the lieutenant governor's office in the past. The even split 24-24 presents uh, a unique opportunity and I, I look forward to continuing the discussions I've had with both the Democratic and the, and the Republican leaders of the Senate as we move toward the, their January 2nd organizational date. And then secondly, I think that the role of tourism uh, for the Lieutenant Governor in this next four years is incredibly exciting, especially this first year as we work through Oklahoma's centennial year. Provides an excellent opportunity to help be uh, an even uh, greater uh, stage, if you would, to be a cheerleader for the state of Oklahoma and to be able to use that as a launching pad for economic development opportunities as more of the country and more of our nation becomes aware of Oklahoma as we broadcast and, and publicize this centennial year. As background for some of our viewers, the state senate has 48 members. The results of November's elections have 24 Democrats, 24 Republicans. State Constitution says if there's a tie in a Senate vote, the Lieutenant Governor casts the tying vote. That's generally correct. That's not, correct. Not exactly that's, correct. That's right. So this has the opportunity to be a real mess uh, it, to me. Now, uh, I think everyone is hoping cooler heads prevail and some level of negotiations are taking place, and I, and yeah. I, and I know they are. Are you involved in those negotiations and, and how do you think all this is going to sort itself out? I'm as involved as I want to be in those negotiations and the lieutenant governor by constitution is the president of the Senate. So um, even though the, the vote is a tie-breaking vote only, the lieutenant governor's role and title is president of the Senate. The negotiations are going on and that is as I expected them to. A lot of people don't understand that the Oklahoma Senate really has worked hard to develop a reputation of being a deliberative body and of priding themselves in their statesmanship. And I think that you are seeing the two leaders of the two caucuses work very hard to maintain that reputation and prove to the people of Oklahoma that they can work together in a united fashion. There's got to be give and take on both sides, mm -hmm. but both of them are communicating with me. They have members of their caucus involved in the negotiations. And I expect the people of Oklahoma to be very proud of what happens on January 2nd. Traditionally, it's my understanding, and you know, from what I've seen, the lieutenant governor frequently plays the role of ambassador, able to travel, represent the state, get out and do things. Uh, but if you're having to be around in case there's a tie vote, it seems like that would restrict you in, 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 in setting up a schedule that you want to adhere to. Am, well, I, am I right? Uh, and you have to know the legislative schedule mm -hmm. to understand that. I mean, clearly, if the, if the vote is a tie-breaking vote only, then um, the, the days that the, the weeks that the Senate meets in committee meetings would certainly be more free. But I expect there to be continued communication throughout the legislative session. We will work closely with the Senate to be aware of the issues that are on the table that are coming forward to the Senate floor for a vote so that if needed that I'll be fully prepared to step in and, and cast those votes. Well, just, just so I fully understand, okay, let's say there's a tie vote. Are you already in the chambers or do they go get you in your office or do they have an hour to find you? I mean, how does, how does all that work? You know, it could be either. I mean, no one really knows, but any of those situations is exactly true. For example, most of the time, the person who is the president pro tem of the Senate, who serves when the president of the Senate or the lieutenant governor is not presiding, they're frequently not in the chamber as the speaker is frequently not in the chamber. And so the opportunity to go and get people to bring them in to cast votes exists. But always remember, even if it's tied 24-24, if one member of the Senate leaves, regardless of which party, it no longer becomes 24-24 it's 24-23 and the ability of the lieutenant governor to cast a vote is erased. And so I really think you'll see more, uh, more of an effort and I certainly hope to be part of that effort in making sure before important issues get to the Senate floor that the consensus has already been built so that those votes do not, um, you know, that there's not delay in taking action. We citizens in Oklahoma at varying levels of government have seen situations exist <coughs> in which there was a, a lot of rancor, a lot of acrimony, and for me just as a lay citizen of Oklahoma, I was quite uh, buoyed 
by the picture in the front page of the Oklahoman that sent with Senator Coffey and Senator Morgan and the tape down the president's <laughs> office. And they were both standing there in the same picture, smiling. And we've had them both on the show. They both seem to get along well. Uh, that seems to me to augur good things for uh, bipartisanship. Well, I think it does. And they're both experienced at what they do. They are, they are knowledgeable uh, negotiators. They are knowledgeable public servants. They want to move Oklahoma forward. Uh, they also know, and I will tell you, uh, I took that picture and I showed it to both of them. <laughs> and both of them being lawyers standing on either side, I said to them, you know, my background as special judge in Stevens County may be the best experience I have for dealing with this, with this kind of a situation. And, and we said that in fun, but they know it's true. And so I, we're having a, a really uh, amiable discussion on, on my part that I'm involved in, and, and I think that will continue. You know, my impression is that, that citizens understand there's philosophical differences, but they don't want partisanship to come in between what's in the best interest of the state. And it seems to me that if there ever was a time yeah. for political elected leaders to prove that they put the, the state in front of partisanship, this is the time. There's going to be a lot of attention on the state senate that you're the president of. I think so, and I think that's a great opportunity uh, to show the people of Oklahoma. I, I think that's the reputation I left the House of mm -hmm. Representatives with, and I think that's important now in the role uh, that the Senate, uh, with the divided Senate and the, and the role and the opportunity as lieutenant governor to be part of helping uh, make that policy be for the people of Oklahoma, most Oklahomans, probably 60% of us are in the middle of the road anyway, regardless of what their party registration is. And so the opportunity of both sides of the aisle to work together in a, in a united fashion, I think is what this, you know, most votes in the Senate are, are pretty overwhelmingly anyway. And the divisions more frequently occur between rural and urban, mm -hmm sometimes between east side of the state and west side of the state. Those votes actually are more, more of those votes are divided than there are between party politics. So I think it'll be interesting for the public to watch us this next year. I'm gonna have to jump in here and get us to a break. We're visiting with the Lieutenant Governor-elect, mm -hmm. Jerry Askins. We'll be back with more on The Verdict. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. Shining is taking responsibility. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma, we know managing your health care can be overwhelming, and it's our job to help you meet the challenge. By guiding, supporting, and showing the way, we encourage you to gain control. Because we believe the best tool we can give you is the confidence to take charge. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Oklahoma, shining through. That land next door was a mess. Take more than a lawnmower to revive that land. I heard the oil and natural gas people was cleaning up old oil sites, and it wouldn't cost us a blood nickel. Oh, yes, sir, it was quite a revival. The whole church showed up. Want to make a playground for the kids. <laughs> it sure is a blessing. <laughs> we'll see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. Wilsey, Meyer, Eatman, Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. You need this one to get satellite HD. This one's your DVR. This one's for local channels. Mm. This one's... What are we supposed to do with all this stuff? Got you covered. Oh, by the way, that old satellite stuff makes a great end table. That doesn't look so bad, right, honey? Don't live in satellite denial. Get the latest entertainment without the hassles. From Cox, your friend in the digital age. There's a whole new world online, but it's not always safe for kids. That's why your parents and teachers set clear rules, when to go online and how to protect yourself on the internet. It's the safe way for kids. Right, gang? Right. Keep safe online. 
Thanks to Lauren Nelson and Cox, we're working to keep Oklahoma kids safer online. For your free guide, log on now. And if you feel your child has been placed in danger by someone online, notify law enforcement today. Welcome back to The Verdict. Nick Cornett with Camp Myers. Karen, where do you want to go from here? We're visiting with Lieutenant Governor-elect Jerry Askins. I want to retreat a little bit, retreat okay. back to tourism. And uh, I noticed a study, I think, of the American Bus Association uh, designated Oklahoma as the number one tourist designation or destination mm -hmm. in 2007. Uh, does that fit right in with your tourism duties? I think it really does, and I think credit needs to be given to Blake Wade, Lee Allen Smith, and the entire Oklahoma Centennial Commission for the calendar that they have put together of events across this state and the, and the work that they have done to promote Oklahoma Centennial across the country. You know, Oklahoma has been the first state to have a float in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and this was our second year to have that float, Oklahoma Rising, as I recall, is the name of the float. And so uh, we're going to be in the Rose Bowl Parade and I think the opportunity then coast to coast, east and west, to be able to promote Oklahoma Centennial and help change people's impression if they have none other than the Grapes of Wrath, the bombing, or um, you know other the tornado tragedies. This is talking about Oklahoma, the place to come and live, the place to come and visit. They have done a remarkable job. I think the Oklahoma Tourism Commission and the Department of Tourism has worked well with the Centennial uh, Commission, and it's going to be an exciting year for Oklahoma. Let's uh, talk a little bit about you personally and your <clears throat> experience. I, I thought back, I didn't uh, mm -hmm. actually have time to look back, but I cannot recall anybody we've had on this show uh, in the five and a half years or almost 300 shows we've done that had experience in, uh, as in the judiciary, mm -hmm. in the legislative, and now in the executive, all three. Uh, you're unique, I think, in that regard. Perhaps not the only person, but one of the very few. How do you think the experience in all three branches of government will serve you? Well, I hope very well it has so far. I, you know, when I, I, I never dreamed of doing any of this while I was growing up. I mean, some people have, have that drive or that goal that they want to be in political office, and that was never what my intention was. I, I felt fortunate to be in Stevens County after I graduated from law school, was quietly doing a little oil and gas work when the opportunity came to be appointed special judge in Stevens County. And in those eight years that I served there, which would be the equivalent of two terms for a, for a judge, uh, taught me a lot more about not just uh, the government process, certainly interpreting legislation, but also in terms of mediation, working out differences, trying to help people resolve conflict r rather than having to take everything in front of a jury. Did a lot of criminal work while I was on the bench and, and really it was that interest that later moved me into the executive branch before I went to the legislature. Yes. Had the opportunity to serve as chairman of Oklahoma's Pardon and Parole Board, worked in the governor's office as deputy counsel for about a little over a year, and then served as executive director of the state agency, the parole board. So having worked in the executive branch, I'm able to go into this office in January and understand the need of preparing a budget to present to the legislature. I'm able to understand some of the personnel issues that are required as you are managing a, a staff certainly larger than having a legislative assistant. But I also think that because I am working in the executive branch, but will have have the opportunity for dealings with the legislature that all of those experiences fit together very well. Um, they have, each one is built upon the previous experience and I think that is what has made me continue to be interested in public service. It's just different ways of trying to help move Oklahoma ahead. We discussed previously your, your role with the state <coughs> senate and how you think that interaction will take place during the, this session and the upcoming sessions. What about your role with the governor's office? How, how, how well do you know Governor Henry and, and how do you think the, uh, the camaraderie will, will, will work between the two offices? Well, I think it'll work well. Before, when he was still state senator, Brad Henry, frequently he and I were negotiators on important issues uh, assigned by his leadership and, and by the speaker on, on my side of the chamber. And we were able to do that. I mean, we didn't always agree when we'd start out, and so we would have to work to find common ground, and even at that time, worked within Governor Keating's office uh, 
as we work to create legislation that not only would pass the legislature, but get a signature from the governor's office. There's other legislation where Senator Henry and I were the authors of each other's bills, whether it was dealing with conservation issues or, or other uh, maybe legal type issues, we have done that. And so we have, I believe, a trust level that's already been established. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's glad I won. And uh, uh, I, he has told me that. And so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. We don't have to develop that relationship. It's one that has existed. And then certainly the last two years especially, while I've been the Democratic leader in the House, we have visited uh, throughout the legislative session and the year on issues that were important to him to see where we and, and the Democratic caucus could be supportive. What do you think are your biggest challenges? What are, what are going to be the hardest things for you to do as Lieutenant Governor? Well, I don't know yet because I think I can, you know, I think we're going to be able to do most of them. But I do think that um, being able to help um, fulfill my role, uh, all my responsibilities as lieutenant governor in these areas that are uncharted, I think that's, you know, we're still waiting to see how that does play out, uh, to see what we can do. And, and I hope it goes as well as we're all expecting it. I think um, in other terms of challenges, it is figuring out how I can be um, a, a complement to issues that are already in place to help move Oklahoma forward. I really believe that this year of the centennial year for Oklahoma is a launching pad and I think that whatever our challenges are is how do we maximize that opportunity to make sure that a year from now after November 16th of 2007 people don't forget about Oklahoma mm -hmm. again. And to me, that's what I take personally as a challenge, is what role can I play in helping make sure that that attention continues and that the attraction that other people will have for Oklahoma will continue to grow. Most people who run for an office and then hold an office realize that running a campaign for that office many times prepares them for serving in the office. This was your first statewide mm -hmm. race, and I'm sure you met a lot of people, experienced yeah. a lot of things, and confronted issues that you hadn't confronted before. What do you think you learned through all of that process that will aid you in your service? One of the best things that happened in the House of Representatives was being the leader of the Democratic Caucus because for the last three years I had traveled different parts of the state on behalf, behalf of House candidates. And that allowed me an opportunity as I went back as a statewide candidate myself to uh, strengthen bonds that began to be established but it also forced me to look at the state in a different way. I come from southwestern Oklahoma. Our issues as it relates to water are maybe similar to northwest Oklahoma, but they're a lot different than the water issues in the eastern side of the state. Economic development is important in all four corners of Oklahoma, but the economic development challenges in southeastern Oklahoma are greater than they are in Oklahoma City. So the opportunity to be frequently in those parts of the state, to have meaningful conversations with the community leaders in those areas, I think gives me um, a better idea of trying to make certain that the policies that we make cannot be uh, they have to benefit the state as a whole. And I think that e Mayor of Oklahoma City, Mayor of Tulsa, they all know, although those are the two economic engines that drive Oklahoma, for the state to succeed, it's important for you all that all of Oklahoma has good education, good health care, a good quality of life, so that people want to move here, increasing the available workforce, which then in turn allow us to recruit additional jobs and improve Oklahoma's economy. And we're going to have to make that the final word. The time went quickly this morning, yeah. Governor. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you all for the opportunity. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Kent and I'll be back with a final word after this. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life.
Bank first. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. One in four women will be a victim of domestic or sexual violence in their lifetime. That's too many. That's why we want you to know that if you or someone you know is suffering at the hands of an abuser, there is help. Call the Oklahoma Safe Line at 1-800-522-SAFE for access to state and local resources that can truly make a difference. Call anonymously, call toll free, call today because domestic violence is not a game. It's, it's life, life or, or death. death. I'm John Holcomb along with the coach Pat Jones. Uh, we got a little bowl special coming up, don't we? They ought to have a rule that if your staff has been fired, yeah. you should not be. There's three teams in postseason now that you did such right. a good job, we just fired your head coach. Yeah. Boise State is excited to be in this football yeah. game. The big story coming out of OU's camp, of course, Adrian Peterson. They obviously think they have a chance to win. It's the Cox Channel Primetime Bowl Special exclusively on the Cox Channel. He needs 28 tickets, Tommy, by the way. <laughs> Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers wrapping up our show with Lieutenant Governor-elect Jerry Askins. Uh, quite an impressive lady mm -hmm. uh, with a great record. She uh, has done well in everything she's done. No reason to think she'll uh, perform differently as Lieutenant Governor. Uh, and this will be a year or a, or a term of challenges for her in the relation to the dealing with the Senate. You know, the state constitution done roughly in 1907 really stretched and analyzed and you have any positions on that that you know was there a way in 1907 to have predicted any of this well <coughs> i was i was born the year after that so <laughs> I, I i couldn't say for sure but uh this is this is a problem that uh, i don't think uh, our forefathers ever thought that we'd yeah. have an, an equal divide uh, in the senate of 24 24. Uh, but uh, we do have a mechanism in, in place to break it now. Mm -hmm. We'll see uh, whether, whether it works and how it works. Well, all eyes will be upon it. Uh, next week, a uh, show on compulsive gambling in Oklahoma. Yes, a lot of new gambling going on in uh, Oklahoma, uh, legal gambling. And we're going to see what kind of uh, challenges and opportunities that presents. It's next week on The Verdict. The preceding program was produced by the Production Services Group at Cox Communications, exclusively for the Cox Channel.